Yo guys, what's up? It's War Spirit. I've got you Zarya's Stage 2 video today. I'm going to be looking at some of the more advanced stuff here with some quick tips followed by a gameplay breakdown. Zarya has been one of my main heroes throughout the beta and still is at launch. She's definitely my best hero and I like to think that I'm pretty damn good at her too. You can check out my Stage 1 video of Zarya for my first impressions and the skill basics if you're not already familiar with her, but I'm hoping this video here is going to be the go-to guide for all up-and-coming Zarya fans. Let's get into it. Quick tip number one, you always want to be getting the most out of your particle cannon's ammo capacity and by managing the alternate fire modes correctly you'll increase your damage output of the cannon immensely. Right clicks for taking out far away targets or targets ducking behind cover and left clicks for close quarters melting on big squishy targets. Although right clicks cost 25 ammo you can fire a bomb off with less than 25 ammo left in the particle cannon even if you only have one ammo without losing any damage which is 100% always worth doing. Spamming right clicks is only really worthwhile for bombarding far away targets due to the one bomb per second fire rate. If you're up close and personal you can combine left clicks with right clicks to cancel the downtime in between firing bombs. And bonus tip here is that the bombs do have a knockback effect so you can crowd control a little bit in teamfights in between your left click melting sessions. And remember save that last bit of ammo for an additional bomb. Quick tip number two, your barrier shields can actually tank more damage than their official hit point pool. Each of Zarya's barriers lasts a short duration, shielding 200 damage before they break. But if you were to get hit by some big burst damage, including things like pulse bombs, rip tires and diva ults, as long as your barrier still has some juice in it, you'll be able to absorb the whole thing. In pubs, where diva is a bit more common, I'll always run straight for that nuclear eject to give me some free energy build up. You can try a little trust exercise with your friend as well by getting them to run run towards the alt 2, shielding them and easily maxing out your particle cannon charge. Another big damage ult you can block is McCree's High Noon. Terribly hard to time, but super clutch when you pull off a double barrier shield to save 2 lives and maximise your charge. Number 3 is that Zarya can bloody rocket jump. It's fun and it's useful. It's pretty advanced, but the sooner you get it into your mind, the sooner you'll start finding uses for it here and there in gameplay. Simply look directly at the ground, as far down as your mouse cursor will let you, simultaneously jump and fire a particle bomb, and you'll be launched quite a bit higher into the air than your normal jumps would allow. The best use I've found for it so far is just to get yourself out of sticky situations where other characters without upwards movement abilities maybe won't be able to follow you. On Hanamura, if you drop under the bridge to pick up the small health pack, instead of doubling back up the stairs you can jump up the right hand side onto the bridge using your self barrier to tank some free damage from surprised enemies at the main door. And you can also use it to surprise flank enemies if they hold the top right stairs, build up some charge off their spam, cut round to the left and then rocket jump up to hit them in the back. With some supreme timing you can also double rocket jump by firing a projectile into the sky first of all and then jumping as it lands while firing off a second particle bomb to boost you twice as much which is only really useful in the initial setup stages of the game to position yourself where the enemy team might not expect a Zarya to be. You will take a little bit of damage while rocket jumping with Zarya, about 25 life, that's one bar of your health pool. But the good thing about Zarya is she's got self regenerating shields so usually when you're rocket jumping you can use that and recharge before actually initiating a fight. Obviously if you're running away and escaping you're either going to escape or you're going to die anyway so taking a little bit of extra splash damage isn't going to make a whole lot of difference. Some rapid fire tips incoming now. Quick tip 4, simple one but not an uncommon mistake for Zarya. Reload before you use your ultimate, or at least if you know you're going to go for an ult, don't blow too much of your ammo beforehand. If you use your graviton surge with very little remaining ammo, you're going to find yourself reloading for most of the duration enemies are caught in your bubble. Really sucks when you're fully charged and could easily have solo wipe, but instead are reloading and your DPSs are left to do what they can with your nice catch. Quick tip 5 is always catch Mercy in your ultimate, otherwise I guess you're okay with trading your Zarya ult for a Mercy Resurrect. The problem is Mercy can easily get twice as many ults as you'll ever get with Zarya in a single match. Sure Mercy can fly out of the Graviton Surge as well if she has another teammate outside of it, but if you don't even try then you're just setting yourself up for failure. Make sure and make them count. Final tip, quick tip 6 is that you have a self healing shield pool that takes up half of your total health pool. This means that Zarya is a great pick in a solo support team lineup where you might not be receiving as many heals as usual. Use your shields to your advantage, hug corners after taking damage to give them time to recharge before throwing yourself back into the fray with say 120 health less than you probably could have had. 
I hope these little tips have been useful for you guys. Any questions at all about Zarya, fire them in the comments and I'll be right on them. We're going to be taking a look at some very sick Zarya gameplay now. This gameplay is taken from a practice scrim with pretty much flawless execution from my team and some big Zarya plays included. Attacking on King's Row, you'll want your team to play an aggressive first push. Zarya excels at aggression. Going into this fight, I want to build my particle charge quickly so I can actually help my team deal damage. Easy way to do that, pop a barrier on a charging friend. Reinhardt. He instantly collides with the enemy Reinhardt counterpin, taking no damage himself, stunning the enemy tank and gaining myself a free 50 particle charge. Next I'm just going to lay down some suppressive alt fires to force the enemy Widowmaker away from the windows while my friendly DPSs clean up the targets on the ground. This section is a perfect example of how you would want to pull off a basic first push on King's Row. Up next we notice a soldier escaping on the right so we chase after him. Zarya is great at backing up a DPS on the hunt, especially friendly tracers and genjis because her projected barriers can protect them from any surprise turnaround burst damage from the target. We get super lucky here and end up nailing a mercy instead of the soldier and unfortunately for the enemy team they're still trailing in from spawn so we get a Reinhardt pick here as well. At this point I've done enough, my particle charge has dropped and I won't be much use against a split enemy team so I fall back and help push the objective. Yup, if you're a Zarya player you might get stuck with the payload sometimes, but someone has to do it. One great thing about Zarya is that coming round corners she can peek for free with her self barrier to see the enemy setup. Our support gets hit by an enemy flanker here. Turn allied health bars on in the options menu under Zarya settings so you can prioritise your barriers on weak friendly targets. As we push round our Reinhardt kinda gets left behind here and I'm just a little late to get round the corner and shield him. A big self shield absorbs a McCree right click and gives me time to regroup with my remaining teammates. You can win fights based on the effectiveness of your Zarya barriers for sure. Good reaction time on Reinhardt pins saves lives mercy in this case. Pumps my damage way up too to insta melt the Reinhardt and then I start suppressing the Widow again. YOLO soldier ult comes in from behind, I check for his main target, get a shield on that ASAP before moving in front of him blocking further damage and then melting him down as well. Our next engagement is crucial to winning the game, we have so much momentum already that this could easily be the final fight. Farah takes my shield in this fight as she moves in to burst the enemy widow down. The rest of us are fine behind the Reinhardt shield, my ult is up and my target is the enemy Mercy. I get a quick spot on her and instantly pop it, ends up being a bit overkill but the most Motive was correct. It's pretty much GG at this point. There is one final Zarya play just at the end of the game that I'm just going to touch on a little bit as well. But coming into this final objective here, the enemy team are all dead. Team kill. We're just waiting for them to try and make their final play. Our Reinhardt gets stun wiped here and our Mercy comes in for a res. 90% of the time Mercy will die while resing her teammates if she's out in the open. But as a Zarya player you can prevent this, just pop a shield on the stationary target and you're saving a key member of your team. This gameplay showed way more than I could have hoped for from a single Zarya match. Pretty much a flawless King's Row run and it's not always going to be so perfect of course but this video is to show you how you want to be doing it and then it's up to you to get it done. Thanks very much for watching guys. Any feedback at all on the video let me know and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already for some more Beast Mode Zarya plays. I'll see you guys in my next video. Thanks very much for watching. Bye bye.